the forefront and at the center of everything are your kids. It's not a popularity contest, it's simply about kids. Experience that I bring to the table in my 38 years that I spent in education, starting in 1979, I started at a small Catholic school, uh, the school that I graduated from. At that time, too, it was, it was interesting being a, going back to the, the school that you actually went to school from. So now you became a colleague with teachers that taught you. But what I learned in that experience was um, how important, number one, education was, but also how important it was to get to know kids, because it was a small enough environment. Unfortunately, the system, over time, uh, you need to make a financial living, especially when you're married and you start having children. So I had to make the decision to leave that very small community and enter public education. So I entered public education in 1985 and started at Palmdale High School in the Antelope Valley. So I went from St. Genevieve's High School of 800 kids to Palmdale High School of a little bit over 37, 3,800 kids. And I was still a teacher and a coach at the time, but it was really trying to, to find my niche now in a very big, diverse school in a very large uh, district. Uh, it was a, a Antelope Valley Union High School district. After a few years of teaching there, I decided that I uh, would get out of teaching and get out of coaching and go into the world of administration. And so for the next 29 years that I've spent in administration, my journey's been very interesting. Um, I started off as a dean of students, so I was dean of discipline um, at Antelope Valley High School, which was a, a campus of 4,000 students in the district, very diverse. Um, after a couple of years of that, I became vice principal over athletics uh, in a Division I school. So you had a lot of issues that you had to deal with, not only from the vice principal seat, but also an athletic director uh, position, um, especially with students that were Division I bound on uh, the NCAA clearinghouse and making sure that those students met all those requirements. So that was very unique. Uh, time. I spent seven years at Antelope Valley High School. My last two years was as the assistant principal. From then, uh, the district moved me to the continuation schools as a principal. I spent four years and I ran the largest continuation school in the state of California. Three campuses, 1,800 students, and that was the changing point of my career. Um, that's where I really had the opportunity to work with the most at-risk population in this state. Really opened my eyes of um, really meeting needs of students. Those students were not four-year college bound. So what, we were, what were we going to do when you were graduating them uh, and preparing them for the world? So we created a number of, uh, at that time they weren't referred to as career technical programs, but in essence they were from art to business to journalism to an auto shop that uh, we built our own race car and raced it around the state of California and works closely with organizations, business organizations, uh, that really support it, uh, providing opportunities for at-risk youth. Uh, during that, my tenure there, four years, uh, the district also asked me to open up and develop the first community schools uh, for the district and also it was a law that was passed by the state in which districts when they expelled students they still had to educate them. So we created uh, two community schools. Um, each one of them had a little bit over 200 students so the district was expelling 400 students uh, throughout the course of each year and we uh, built two new schools to support those students small class size, uh, get them caught up on credits so they, after a year, could return to their comprehensive high school and not be behind. Uh, after that, doing that for a couple of years, uh, the district asked me to be principal of Highland High School in the district, a little bit over 4,000 students. Highland High School was an international baccalaureate school. It had a ROTC program. It had a business academy. It had a law and government academy. Uh, so it was very different um, because there was just a tremendous uh, atmosphere at that school, very competitive uh, between students. I remember my last year there having 63 valedictorians. Um, 
So it was just one of those schools that kids competed academically, a uh, very strong academic school. After a four-year stint there, the district asked me to spend my last two years running in a school for emotionally disturbed students. Had 50 students. It was our stopgap school before students uh, ended up in residential placement, uh, trying to save the district funding because they were spending so much on residential placements. So I did that for two years. Uh, come to realize that I, I really wanted something different. I wanted to run a district. It wasn't going to happen in the Antelope Valley at the time, so I looked around and I found Upper Lake. Never been to Northern California. Um, came up here and fell in love with Lake County and uh, spent 11 years, uh, 10 of which I was the superintendent principal of Upper Lake High School District. And in my last and final year before retiring, I uh, was able to unify Upper Lake Elementary School and Upper Lake High School District, something that I think a lot of people believe would never happen. Uh, for almost 70, 80, 90 years, they were two separate districts. But the staff was uh, very supportive in that move. We, we accomplished that in my last year. And um, in June of 17, I retired from that position. The election is, is June 5th. Uh, I encourage everybody in Lake County who are registered voters to, to be involved, to get out and vote, uh, to have their voice heard, because I think it's one of those unique situations in our country that you can actually do that. So I encourage everybody to come out June 5th and to, to cast their vote. Hopefully they cast it for me, but uh, we'll see what happens.